Welcome, beloved community. Whether you are here with us in this sanctuary or joining us online, we, are, we gather together in the spirit of worship and fellowship. In this beautiful Sunday morning, let us embrace the wisdom of beatitude, those profound blessings Jesus shared in the Sermon on the Mount. We are blessed because we are poor in spirit, recognizing our deep need for God, and we are blessed because we are thirsty for righteousness, longing for justice and goodness in our lives and in our world. May uh, this morning, may we find comfort in mourning, strength in our meekness, and joy in our hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let us worship God in the spirit of these blessings. Amen. Please stand in body or in spirit and join in our call to worship. God in the spirit revealed in Jesus Christ calls us by grace. Image of our creator that we may one and find love for the world. Today is the day God cares for the integrity of creation wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness. Today is the day God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends. <clears throat> Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving people despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace. And so shall we. Today is the day God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful, and lifts up the lowly. And so shall we. Today is the day God calls for nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exalts when the wolf grazes with the lamb. And so shall we. Today is the day God brings good news to the poor, proclaims the release to the captives, gives sight to the blind, and sets the oppressed free. And so shall we. Please be seated for the reading of I Go to Sing, and stand as you are able for our hymn later. We are the church. So I might be exhausted and the family might be cranky, but I will be going to church on Sunday. Don't know who's preaching, doesn't matter. Oh, sorry, Sharon. <laughs> This sermon may be helpful or not, holds my attention or doesn't, it's the singing. I go to sing. I get up, get cleaned, get dressed, possibly get mad, first at the scale, and then at the empty coffee pot, maybe at the traffic, get going, get there, get seated, get comfortable, get focused, and when the music starts, get saved. It's the willingness to stand if you are able, the common agreement on the page number, the voluntary sharing of songbooks with people in your row, even the people you rode there with. But most of all, most of all, it's the collective in-breath 
before the first sound is made, the collective drawing upon the grace of God, the collective, if inadvertent, admission that we are all human, all fragile, all in need of that sustaining air freely dispensed, all in need of each other to get the key right and not sound discordant. It's the hidden life celebration in the act of making a joyful noise all together. <laughs> you don't even have to sound that good. Singing together still brings home the we-ness in worship, the not aloneness of life in God, the best of all we have to offer each other. <laughs> when we are singing, I think that I might actually be able to forgive you for being so terribly human. <laughs> and you might be able to forgive me for being so terribly not there yet. And we might be able to find peace now not postpone it for some heavily hereafter, but live and breathe it today, drawing in the grace of God, voicing out our need and hope and gratitude and longing. When we are singing, <laughs> I can feel a new, better world coming. And if I get to be part of it, you do too. So sing with me, and we'll make it down that blessed road together collectively better than we ever thought possible. Can I get an amen? amen. So will you? Will you sing with me right now? Will you stand if you are able and sing one of Sharon's and my favorites, We Are the Church? Please be seated. Please join me in our opening prayer. 
God of all creation, we ask for your guidance as we live by grace, pursue your justice, and learn how to love all of your children. May we always know that you go in front of us wherever we go and that you wait for us when we fall behind. May we be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite the children to come forward for children's time. congregation. Hello kids. My name is Kimmy and I'm the shine coordinator here and I get to talk to you guys about today's message. So I have some pictures behind me and when Jesus was here he put in blessings and they're called the Beatitudes right but some of them are kind of confusing. So let's start off with who do you think that God blesses? Do we know? Us, yes, us is a good one. Who else? Do you see something on the screen that might help? People, that is good. So what do we think of the first one with the girl looking like that? What does she look like to us? Sad, yeah. She was called mourning, so she's sad. And God said, blessed those who mourn because those who mourn will have their, no, that's food, sorry. The mourn will be comforted, right? So God will be them. And then the person next to her, do you guys remember learning about her in school? Yeah. yeah. She wasn't allowed to go to school, right? And what did she do? Yeah, she fought for rights. And God says, blessed those who seek justice and fight and who are oppressed. Because she was hurt because she fought for what she thought was right. And then we have different ones. Like down below is service people. And God says, blessed those who are the peacekeeper. Now, what do you think that means, the peacekeeper? People who make peace. It's right in there. Good job. And... God goes through it. Like I said, we'll learn about eight of them today. But do you think you need to be perfect in order to be blessed by God? No. Do you think when Jesus was telling this that the people that he was telling them to thought that he was going to be talking about people that weren't perfect? No. All these people that hung out with Jesus, they thought that they were the best. And God, or they wanted Jesus to bless them. Jesus blessed people that might have been different, those that were sad, those that might not be perfect, those who are meek, which are those who are quiet. And God went through and blessed them all. So that's what we're going to learn today is how we can be more like Jesus and what the different blessing that Jesus left for us. Will you guys pray with me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for letting us be who we are. Thank you for all the blessings you give us, and please help us strive to be the best people we can be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, as the, as the children are going to Sunday school and the youth are going to their, their uh, study, um, I invite you to continue in the, in the time of prayer. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we are so grateful that you are here with us this morning. It is a blessing to come into your presence, to hear your word, to sing your praise, and to be in your house. 
We pray this morning for those who are experiencing violence and war all around the world. We ask that you be with them and that you show them and us as well how to be peacemakers, peacekeepers. Show us how to solve our problems in a better way. We pray this morning for all around the world who are ill or suffering for any reason. Comfort them, be with them, ease their pain and their struggles. We pray this morning for James's father who was taken to the ER at three o'clock in the morning and who has COVID and possibly RSV and the flu all at once. Lay your healing hand on him and bring him back to restored health. We also pray for our shut-ins, for Muriel and for Jan. We pray for all those who cannot be with us this morning. We ask that you bring them back to us safely and in good time so that we may see their faces again. We pray for those who grieve, for the Tsang family and for uh, the DeGroote family. We pray for ourselves this morning. May we always follow you on the path that you have laid out for us. And now will you all join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we listen to Wan Chen's meditative music, feel free to move about the sanctuary and put your offering in the offering boxes behind the seats in the, in the sanctuary. You may also uh, put a prayer in the prayer wall, which is in the very back. Um, or you may just sit in an attitude of prayer.
Our reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Listen now for the word of God. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up a mountain. He sat down and his disciples came to him. He taught them, saying, Blessed are people who are hopeless, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are people who grieve, because they will be made glad. Blessed are people who are humble, because they will inherit the earth. Blessed are people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, because they will be fed until they are full. Blessed are people who show mercy because they will receive mercy. Blessed are people who have pure hearts because they will see God. Blessed are people who make peace because they will be called God's children. Blessed are people whose lives are harassed because they are righteous, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are you when people insult you and harass you and speak all kinds of bad and false things about you, all because of me. Be full of joy and be glad because you have a great reward in heaven, in the same way people harass the prophets who came before you. Let the church hear what the Spirit is saying.
Thank you, choir. And thank you, Janet. I forgot to say that earlier. And thank you, John. Please pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come like water and heal our hurts. Come like a breeze and blow all fears and doubts away. And may we be filled with your power and wisdom this morning. Amen. I am not a minister. I am a United Methodist deaconess. Deaconesses and the male equivalent, which are called home missioners, are not ordained. We are an order of lay people consecrated to a lifetime of love, justice, and service. The United Methodist Agency that oversees the order of deaconess home missioners is United Women in Faith, formerly called United Methodist Women. Raise your hand if you've ever been a member of UMW. A few, a few. We have never had a unit here. So those of us who have been here forever haven't been a member for a long time. But the Book of Discipline says that every church should have a unit. And it wouldn't be a big stretch for us. We already have a quilting group, a reading group, several Bible studies, and a keen interest in missions. So if there's interest in formalizing all of this into a United Women in Faith unit, please let me know. And that is the end of the advertisement. <laughs> I was consecrated as a deaconess in 2018. I had begun traveling to the Philippines the year before. Now, there are a lot of deaconesses there, and every one of them already treated me like a sister when they found out that I would soon be a deaconess. This was the start of realizing that everywhere I go, God is with me. For the first three of my six trips, in other words, in 2017, 18, and 19, I was with our conference Solidarity Mission Team, led by the wonderful Joy Prim. On those trips, we visited political prisoners in the overcrowded jails. We spent time embedded in indigenous communities, and we learned about things like the peace process, human rights violations, red tagging, and so much more. Our hosts were the National Council of Churches in the Philippines. There were, and still are, many deaconesses serving in the various departments of that organization. Now, the more deaconesses I met, the more I wanted to meet. And when I was consecrated, you know it's funny? But I was only the third deaconess in this annual conference. So in all of Southern California and Hawaii, I was only the third one. So I didn't know very many deaconesses in the US. It didn't take long for me to know many, many times that in the Philippines. So it was in that country that I learned how to be a deaconess. And that is why I am writing a book about them. Now, some of what I have learned from them is expressed in our social principles, which we spoke as our call to worship this morning. Some of it is found in the Beatitudes, which serve as our scripture for today. All of it is our deaconess call to a lifetime of love, justice, and service. But I have to tell you now that this, the title of this sermon did not come from a deaconess, but from someone else I met in the Philippines. Her name is Rebecca Lawson. She was born in the farm country of Pennsylvania and raised in a Pentecostal church. And she felt called at a very young age to be a missionary. She intended to go to Africa but due to very complicated circumstances, she ended up in the Philippines as a Presbyterian missionary. Now, I could explain that to you, but it would take me all day. Becca lives at the home for retired United Methodist Deaconesses, where I stay when I travel there. She is still not United Methodist, despite my best efforts. Nor is she a retired deaconess, but she lives there anyway. She is not even a Presbyterian missionary anymore, but she has chosen to continue living in the Philippines. 
Her work is different every time I visit, but she is always working for social justice. She is the one who helped me get home when I was in Manila in March of 2020, and the pandemic lockdown began very suddenly. She is also the one who told me over and over by Facebook Messenger and Zoom meetings during the pandemic that God is with us and God is waiting for us. Now, I was always familiar with the saying that God is with us. It made sense to remember that in the dark days of the pandemic. In the Philippines, people were going hungry. Some even starved to death. And COVID was everywhere, and vaccines were very slow to arrive, especially in the, co in the poor communities. Still, Becca hold, held on to the truth that God is with us. It took me a while to absorb the other part. God is waiting for us. Waiting for us to do what? In the middle of the pandemic, what could we do that God is waiting for? Weren't we waiting for God instead? But as I pondered that image of God standing there waiting for me, I couldn't sit still. And in the fall of 2020, I guess God was with me. As the ad for a Doctor of Ministry program in creative writing and public theology just happened to pop up on Facebook as I was scrolling. And instead of ignoring it like I do all the other ads, I heard myself say out loud, that's it. That's what I will do. Now, I hadn't been thinking at all about more education. And it had been so long since my husband Dale had even brought it up that maybe I should think about getting a doctorate that I knew he had given up on it. But I applied without even investigating that seminary or the program any further. And when I was accepted, I made it conditional. I think I was testing God, and that's really not good. And I said, unless I get a full scholarship, I will not enroll. Well, I ended up applying for four scholarships, and I got all of them. I ended up returning the one from this church and part of another because I received way more than I needed for that year. God was with me, providing for me, and God was waiting for me to do this. Before I knew it, I was attending classes on Zoom at 6 a.m. because the seminary is in Pittsburgh. And it's not over. God is still waiting for me. I had thought I would graduate early after only three years, but it's going to take me several more months to finish writing my book. So I will be graduating in May of 2025. I want to tell you that Pittsburgh is very lovely in the spring. It has a wonderful museum, and it's an easy drive to Falling Water, which is Frank Lloyd's Wright House, the Frank Lloyd Wright's house in Pennsylvania. And maybe some of you could come and help me celebrate next May. I know God will be there. God is waiting for me to get there. Now, backing up just a little, in 2023, I made two trips to the Philippines to interview 25 deaconesses and two home missioners for my book. I arrived there just about three years to the day from when I had left in a panic in 2020, when it was just hours before the airport was going to be closed. God with, went with me in 2023, too. God was there waiting for me. My itineraries for the trips were what I needed to meet my goals for writing my book. Just as God had been with me in the earlier trips, and when I was scrolling Facebook and just happened to see an ad, just as God has always been with me, preparing me my whole life for what I am doing now. Deaconesses took me everywhere I needed to go there, to Decker, where I always stay and find time to have a wonderful conversation with Becca to church, to the mall, to meet and interview deaconesses. They brought me to Mindanao for a week of interviews all over Cotabato. Some of you know what, where, where Cotabato is. 
They brought me to the meeting of Diakonia Asia Pacific, which is comprised of deaconesses and deacons and women cl clergy from, of many denominations from all over that part of the world. They brought me to a leadership development conference for A, which is for active women, for women serving the church. And finally, they brought me to the second disability consultation in the Philippines Central Conference. God had been waiting for me for three years to return to the Philippines, and God was with me everywhere I looked, especially at the disability consultation. Now, in 2017, God had been with me too, and that was the first time I spoke to conference leaders about disability ministries. Back then, I was the chair of the denominational committee as soon as I told them about my work, they decided to hold a disability consultation, and they did in 2019. It was amazing, and the seed was planted and nourished and began to grow. But then the pandemic interfered, and growth slowed. I waited. God and I waited together. And the second consultation was finally held last fall. We learned about disability and mental health. The participants spent the last several hours of the meeting planning a comprehensive program to educate as many church leaders as possible and to provide not only curriculum that can be used to teach about disabilities and mental health, but also Sunday school and Bible study curriculum that will be accessible to everyone. At the end, they thanked me I hadn't done anything except be where God wanted me, waited for me to be. God had done it all. I was speechless in that moment, and I still feel at a loss to explain it all because it seems to me that it was a miracle. But I know this. God is with you, too. God is with all of us here. Those of us gathered here and those watching online, God is with us all, waiting for us all the time. When we are tired or sad or anxious or lonely or angry or frustrated or grieving or at a loss as to what to do next, when do you see God with you? What do you think of when I say, God is waiting for you? Think about that for just a moment. I hope you will think about this more this afternoon and more th and throughout this week. God is with us as we stay in our comfort zones and as we venture out of them. God is waiting for us to take a step, to make a move, to change and grow. You know, I would never thought I would love traveling to the Philippines, and it's a long flight. I never thought I'd love it so much. In fact, I really thought at the beginning that I would go the one time and never go back again. But I found God there. God had been waiting for me, and God has changed me and shown me what is possible for me to do in my work? And it's so much more than I could ever have dreamed about. I am overwhelmed by the goodness of God. And I ask you to let the goodness of God overwhelm you too. God is with us. God is waiting for us. Open your eyes to, our good, to your goodness, God to your presence among us, and to you waiting for us. Amen. Will you please rise as you are able and sing together, We Are One in the Spirit.
be seated. I have just a few announcements this morning. Um, Raymond Sang has passed away, and our prayers are with Leah and, and the family. Her, his, uh, the celebration of life will take place at 3 p.m. on fe February 2nd, right here in the sanctuary. Um, February 2nd is a Saturday. A Friday, sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Um, the sh next Shine event is on February 7th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. It will be a celebration of Chinese New Year. Uh, and the, our, faith our health ministry and faith community nurses will help us prosper by teaching basic CPR and AED skills. So please don't miss that. It's for all ages. It's not just for children. It's for adults, and especially the CPR and AED is definitely for adults. So please come. Uh, Adria de Groot, longtime member of our church, has passed away, and our prayers are with, with Barbara and the family. Um, his celebration of life service will be at 3 p.m. on February 10th. Super Bowl of Caring on February 11th, which is also Scout Sunday. Super Bowl, oh boy. Uh, let's come together and, and make this the best, uh, the best Super Bowl ever by bringing cans of soup to donate and other goods to donate to Families Forward. Thank you. And now will you receive this benediction? Stand to receive the benediction. This is going to be an interactive benediction. So I'm, every time I say, because, I want you to say, God is with us. So let's practice, because. God is with us. We are blessed when we grieve, because. God is with us. We are blessed when we are peacemakers, because. God is with us. We are blessed when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, because God is with us. we are blessed when uh, <laughs> forgot the last one. <laughs> we are blessed whenever we do anything because God is with us. and God is waiting for us. So let us go out into the world. Mm -hmm.